Welcome and thank you for tuning in to the New Direction Church television broadcast, where Pastor Kenneth E. Sullivan Jr. is our senior pastor. Here at New Direction Church, we believe that the word you hear today will bless your life and the lives of your family. So stay tuned in and get ready to head in a new direction. Hello, I'm Pastor Ken Sullivan Jr., senior pastor of the New Direction Church. I'm so glad you tuned into our broadcast today. I trust and believe that the message you're about to hear will truly transform and change your life. I have some important information to share with you after this broadcast, so please stay tuned. Now, let's get into the Word. Yeah. You know, you said some, some really good things that I think, <laughs> that I think are really a, been a blessing if you're single. Um, you know, it is so important that you learn how to use your time wisely. Absolutely. Because, you know, our, our time is precious and, and you won't be single forever. Mm -hmm. uh, if you got faith, <laughs> you won't be single forever. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, one thing that you said was, um, or if you're celibate and want to be single, but um, one of the things that you said was, um, you know, you asked the question, where are all the men? And it came to me, you know, <laughs> all you need is the one right man anyway. Exactly, you right? Know, but that's the way, when you're frustrated. Exactly. I mean, I'm just being real. When you're frustrated, you're like, I just want to see a bunch of men. Give me yeah, the men. Yeah, Give me the men. Yeah. When you know good and darn well that it's just sure. one man that you sure. need, one man that is perfect for you. And so and, and for good. me, when I get like that, I have to check myself. I don't need to be around a whole bunch of guys. Sure. Sure. I don't need to have a parade of men at my disposal. I just need that one man. Yeah. But if we're talking about the frustrations, yeah, I'm going to be real. You get like that sometimes. Sure. But you, you, you I'm, tired of, I'm tired of seeing these girls. I want to see some arms and, <laughs> and, and, and chest and, and, all, and, all that and stuff. muscles, right? You know? Yeah. So you, I mean, yeah. Sure. You know, but I think you said it best that I do think we have to go back to their struggles with both being single mm -hmm. and being married. Right. And you know, when we recognize that, one of the great things that you mentioned was that you had some great people mm -hmm. who, you know, some, some guys who were Christian who really helped you uh, understand mm -hmm. some things that you needed perhaps to think about and look at and improve. And you know, sometimes you have to be brutally honest with yourself as Absolutely. you were. And Absolutely. say, am I really in a position to be married, there's some things perhaps that I need to have improved. So often we want what we're not ready for. Absolutely. And God knows us better than we know ourselves. He knows, you know, what we need, as you said, at the right time. And I think that the wisest thing to do, the Bible over and over talks about wait upon the Lord, mm -hmm. be of good courage. They mm -hmm. that wait upon the Lord, uh, you know, shall be renewed and all these things that take place while you're waiting. I think it is so important um, that while you're single, you are patient and that you are spending that time with God right. so that God can properly prepare you mm -hmm. for the person he has for you. Mm -hmm. You know, so um, those are some wonderful insights, insights that you shared. Um, tell me a little bit more about Coco's Couch. Okay. Um, what are some of the things that you see common uh, commonly asked by young ladies and some things perhaps that you uh, find yourself addressing and dealing with on a you know regular basis what are some of the things you you, you touched on a lot of things already mm -hmm. but maybe what are some of the common things that you uh, deal with and address and you like to address on today maybe that could help some young ladies really the the biggest thing what I'm finding is um, relationships there are a lot of followers on this blog that are married, that are single, that are divorced, or what have you. And it seems like if I, when I write a post that's dealing with relationships and dating, I get more views. Sure. Um, also, healing from the past hurts. Sure. I think um, a lot of women, and, and even some men, because I do have male followers too, um, they want to know how how do you heal from that i'm tired of being angry i'm tired of being frustrated i'm i'm tired of being depressed how do sure. i get through that and so a lot of my blogs i may not quote scripture all the time but sure. there's biblical principles in in sure. each and every one so in those blogs those are the common themes 
it's the dating and all the relationships, the things that go along with dating and relationships, and and healing from past hurts. Those, that's their issues. That's what they want to know about. Sure. And so, really, I'm not I'm not an expert. I don't consider myself one, but I've been through a lot. Sure. And so, and some may say, okay, well then you got some knowledge. You're sure. Somewhat of sure. an expert. So when I write, I'm writing to my past self. Mm, I'm writing to good. my present self and I'm writing to my future self. That's good. So that way I am reaching women at any point in their sure. life. Sure. Yeah. You know, I have some women that have gone through what I've already been through. Wow. And so when I write to my past self, I'm also writing how to overcome it. Yeah. So I'm not just dealing with the struggles. Good. Okay, so this is it. This is your struggle. This is good. what you're dealing with. But this is how you can get over it. Mm -hmm. When I'm writing to my present self, I'm just talking about what I'm dealing with today. Right. And there's going to be someone that says, man, I'm right there with you. Sure. Okay, let's dialogue about it. Let's yeah. talk about it. Yeah. And then my future self, hopefully, That's good. there's someone who's already where I want to be. Sure. That will email me or comment or share sure. or what have you sure. to say, hang in there. Sure. Because I know what that's like. Sure. This is where I'm at and this is how we do it. And so I just want to build a network of women. So many times women, we are in competition with one another for no reason. We compete with one another. Sure. There's so much room up here. Sure. If we stop pulling each other down. Sure. So I am trying to empower women that's good. That's to good. understand themselves, understand how precious, how beautiful they are. Sure. But also to empower others so that we all can rise up. Together. Together. That's good. That's awesome. Do this thing together. Quit being so competitive with one another. That's awesome. That's awesome. And we're going to come back all after right. this next song because there's some more things I want you to address and share. We're going to dig a little bit deeper. Uh, we're so glad to have again on today Javen who is here as our musical guest. He's going to bless us with his song, I'm All Right. I get upset And sometimes down Feeling so lost Like no one's around But I pray hard And one thing I found Is he hears my cry he never lets me down Oh, I, I'm all right yeah. Oh, I, I'm all right yeah. Oh, I, I'm all right find your way so many questions yeah don't know what to say just look up to him and say a little prayer he'll give you peace and I'm telling you your burdens he'll share Say that.
sought the Lord, He heard my cry and pitied every, every groan. Long as I live and troubles rise, I'm willing to trust Him, so I'll be all right. All right. Give it up one more time for Javen. We're so glad to have him uh, sharing his gift on today. We've been talking about relationships, everything from being single to being married. And I've got some wonderful guests here on today, Nathan McGuire and Hazel Owens. And we've just been uh, delving into just all of this stuff. And I think that those who have been uh, tuning in and have been watching us up until this point, I'm sure you've been blessed. We're going to go a little bit deeper uh, because our guests today have a working relationship. Uh, Hazel, as she's already shared, has a blog. Yes. And Nathan already works with families, with coaching and counseling them as it relates to relationships. So good to have y'all again. I can't say Thank that you. enough. We're so uh, happy to have you here on Praise the Lord. Uh, first and foremost, kind of share with us maybe you all's working relationship. Because I know aside from the things that you both do, you all have a segment, I believe, each week that you mm -hmm. kind of share and deal with relationships. how that all come about and, and how, does, how do you all work uh, <laughs> together each week sharing um, the things that you share about relationships? Well, it's funny, and I'm sorry, I had to jump it off. It's funny because I get, I get asked that question all the time. So people see me and they're like, you're the girl that works with Nathan McGuire. Yep, I'm the girl that works with Nathan McGuire. <laughs> and so um, it's very frequent someone that will come up to me and ask, well, how did that happen? Mm -hmm. Like, I mean, I know you guys are on the radio every week. I mean, how did that happen? Honestly, I went to Nathan. He was my Sunday school teacher. Okay. For the young adult Sunday school. And I was trying to figure out this whole church thing. I mean, I went to church. I'm a Christian, all that good stuff. But like many sure. folks that are in the church, I was still in the world. I was on that sure. fence and wasn't really um, trying to get involved in ministry or anything like that. And, man, God has better plans. But at any rate, um, at the time, I kept feeling like something was missing. I don't know what it was. So I thought it was, you know, maybe I'm not involved in church like how I need to be so tried this thing out and I met Nathan like I said teaching he was teaching Sunday school and we're studying uh, freedom in Christ sure and this particular day I'm a talker but <laughs> in this class I didn't really say too much because I don't know anybody and sure. the things that we were talking about it was hitting home for me sure but this particular day, I kept answering all the questions and all this and that. And he's like, you know, I'm going to call on you, right? I was like, oh, Lord. So <laughs> he does the spirit exercise and, and, and taps into an area of my life that I thought I was past. Wow. I thought that um, I was over sure. and clearly was not. And so right then he gives me his number. I'm not knowing that he's a therapist. I have no sure. idea. I think he's just another minister teaching Sunday school. Sure. So he gives me his number. He's like, call me, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, all right, well, whatever. So I then start to notice that I was getting these headaches, really bad headaches to the point where I can take uh, Advil, ibuprofen, whatever, and would take the maximum amount you can take in a day, and the headache would still be there. Sure. So I started tracking the headaches. And I'm like, man, I've been get, having these for a while. Averaging four to five hours of sleep, just all kinds of crazy stuff. So I go to the doctor, and the doctor is basically like, you're depressed. And here's some antidepressants for wow. you to take. You need more sleep, and you need to get to the root of what's causing these, these headaches. Is stress, but what is it? And I'm like, I am not depressed. I'm not. <laughs> I'm about to go to Jesus. He's going <laughs> to cure me. I'm not depressed. Get your deliverance. Right, exactly. Yeah. He's going to give me my deliverance. <laughs> and so um, Nathan um, heard about it, and he's like, Hazel, do you understand what your doctor's telling you? That if you don't take that medication, you will be in a hospital bed. You could have an aneurysm. You could have a... And I'm like, all right, Nathan, I'll come see you. But yeah, I don't, I don't know. Well, you'll have to wait. 
That's yeah. what I told him. I said, he'll have to wait. And I wanted sleep. I was so sure. tired. Sure. So I went to him because I needed sleep and I got sure. tired of headaches. And he helped me through this healing journey. He invited me on his, I knew about the radio show. He invited me on his show in, wow, July last year. And he said, I just want you to share your testimony. And when he, when he asked, I said, yes, too quick. <laughs> I was like, yeah. And then I was like, sure. oh. I probably shouldn't have said yes. <laughs> <laughs> so I tried to get out of it. I'm like, it back. I, I don't, I don't, I don't want to do it. But I did. <laughs> and it helped folks. And so next thing I know, we evolved. And here we are. Mm. I mean, he turned into a Sunday school teacher, to a counselor, to a friend, mentor, and now brother. Wow. Mm. So it's just That's amazing wonderful. how God works. That's wonderful. You know, uh, I know we have... Um, a certain amount of time. There's some things I want to kind of delve into. With you all working together, I know that you probably, and we've discussed singles and being single, we've touched on marriage and, and married people, the issues they have and how they can kind of work through those things. I kind of want to deal with some of the questions that people have who are Christians or questions they have about what's acceptable in dating and you know we're in the 21st century everything is online and mm. and people meet people that they uh, have never seen face to face <laughs> online and you know you got people's online presentation of themselves <laughs> then you have their real presentation of themselves online there's a big real. difference yeah. and there's <laughs> only so much you can gauge and learn about a person online what are you all's thoughts as it relates to online dating, even for Christians? I mean, we got a ton of, of um, Christian, um, you know, singles, uh, uh, clubs and dating, um, you know, ministries and, and businesses where they hook people mm -hmm. up. In fact, I deal with this in my book, uh, Rules of Engagement, mm -hmm. that, you know, I've had to change my premise a little bit. Let me say that before we go a little <laughs> deeper. Changing it up. Even I was a little old school <laughs> and I used to use a term that you can't find a spouse with a mouse. Mm. Wow. that you can't meet a person that's designed for you. But, you know, it's a different world now. And mm -hmm. though we know the principles of God's word does not change, um, people, you know, do so much online and they connect with people. And I know couples who are together right now doing well, a number of couples mm -hmm. who have met their spouses online. So, mm -hmm. uh, you know, I want to hear you all's thoughts because I know y'all dealing with a lot of people who are calling in and connecting with y'all, um, you know, via your, your radio broadcast. What, what's you all's thoughts on that? Are oh, you going to pass it to me, huh? You want, you want to jump it off? <laughs> I mean, I have mine, but. Well, I'll tell you that um, what you learn, especially in the uh, essence of doing therapy, is that you really, I don't care if it's online, if it's over across the seas or you're on the phone, you attract who you are. Mm -hmm. Doesn't matter who you're dealing with. In the essence, That's you, true. you you know you learn this thing what we call imago therapy, and that is that you are dealing with uh, your childhood wounds. So every time you go to you really date somebody, um, you're trying to get somebody that literally has the positives and negatives of your parents. You oh, your parents. Yeah, okay. of your parents. So every time you go to meet somebody, you're really looking for the positives and negatives. And it's funny, Kim, because if they don't have the negatives. You'll say things like they're too nice, or you know, I don't, you know, I don't want, I don't like them. Sure. Or, but it's the positive and negative. So in the end, um, it doesn't matter if it's online. I try to help people understand that. Uh, seek the Lord. Mm -hmm. Wait on Him. Sure. He's got somebody for you. Sure. But you have to work on yourself because if you attract who you are, you better go check out who you are. You know, sure. what issues and the things that you have that work on. But in therapy, I deal with people, too, that they've met online and they've got an awesome relationship. Mm -hmm. But that's one of those things, right? We grow sure. up as Christians like, oh, well, Lord, how hard y'all meet? <laughs> oh, online, huh? You know, so then you meet a couple they met right in the church and you wish they would go somewhere to get some help, you know. So, yeah, it's more about um, you dealing with who you are sure. and learning to surrender uh, to God to get the partner that he has for you and not that you have sure. for you. Mm -hmm. Sure. You know, and, and mm -hmm. before you touch on this, Hazel, because mm -hmm. we're going to bring it your way. Mm -hmm. uh, I think there are some pros and cons. I think you, what you said is absolutely true. And I think we do those things, you know, without realizing 
you know, what we're looking for in people, but, you know, we just kind of in our subconscious have kind of those things in mind. Uh, there are some pros and cons. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, we've, of course, we've got some good stories, but there's some horror stories with mm -hmm. people as well because people are not always who they portray themselves to mm -hmm. be. And uh, maybe you can touch on that, Hazel, because you've got your opinion about that. What, are, what, would, what, are, what is your opinion or what are some things that you've seen? You know, I think it's to each his own. I think, you know, kind of along the lines of what Nathan was saying, you are going to attract, you're going to attract who you are. So as far as the avenue, I think it's to each his own. Now, me personally, I am not all for the online dating. I'm a little old fashioned. Sure. Um, I kind of like. You're old fashioned? A little, a little bit. <laughs> kinda, a little bit. Just a, a, little, a little bit. I kind of just want things to happen naturally. Sure. You know, you, you meet a guy, you meet a girl, you start the friendship, and you start dating and courting and, and all that. So that's just, just, that's just my style. That's sure. where that comfort level is. But on the other hand, I think whether you're meeting someone online, or you meet them at the grocery store, people are going to put on their representatives first. That's true. So best foot forward. They, <laughs> they, they, they are. You the best so first. regardless of, uh, they, they may portray themselves differently. And I think that it is about you seeking the Lord on that yeah. person. Yeah. When now, I didn't know this before, but now when I meet a guy, he asks me for my number. If I give it to him, or even if I don't, I want a guy. That's true. Who is That's this guy? Good. Show me who he is. Is it okay for me to interact with him? What is his purpose of being in my life? Yeah. Show me all the things about him. And a lot yeah. of times we will look at what we think that they are, mm. yeah. whether good or bad, and either, and come up with our own assumptions pr pretty much. Yeah. So whether it's an online dating thing or what have you, now the thing about online dating, you are hiding behind a computer. Yeah. So that's, those are the risk factors. <laughs> sure. So someone, you can Photoshop a picture. Yeah. You know, you can, you, you, there's a lot of different things there. But, I mean, there are some folks, and I, I know some folks that have met um, a good friend of mine. She met her husband uh, online. Uh, in, in high school, we had AOL, and they were in an internet <laughs> chat room. and that's how they met and they're they're expecting their first child and and will be married nine years wow i mean great relationship wow. they both you know pure kept themselves pure and, and i mean they they did yeah. the thing and so then there's some that you know they had horror stories i think it's to each his own but i think that you have to seek the lord in whatever avenue you choose sure so sure that's good that's good insight uh you know even as you were speaking i was thinking about the fact just because they're christian mm. doesn't mean that's the ideal person come on now uh, yes. god has to be consulted in every Everything. major decision the bible says uh trust in the lord with all your heart sure. lean not to your own understanding mm -hmm. and what you can see and recognize but in all your ways, that's everything. That's who you choose to marry. Yes. That's how you manage your yes. money. That's your career path. Yes. And I think that if we put God first, even in selecting or choosing the person, you know, that he has for us, I think that it will prevent us from having a lot of problems oh, later on. Uh, even when we talk about problems, you know, there's, there's uh, in, in relationships, many of those problems I've discovered come as a result of people not doing a thorough investigation <laughs> or interview mm -hmm. of the person that they are dating. You know, when you look at um, those who run to be president uh, or for office, when they get a vice or somebody in their cabinet, they do a thorough <laughs> background <laughs> check on them. Uh, positives, negatives, you know, what type of baggage are they bringing? Because, mm -hmm. you know, you can have what they call, I believe it's the, the November surprise or October <laughs> surprise <laughs> when yes, you're running yes. and then the stuff that you didn't see comes out. Um, you know, I use this illustration analogy that, you know, when you buy a car, uh, they have what they call the fact check or mm -hmm. the car check that gives you the history of the car and the background of the car that too often people look at the make or the model of the car then you know there are many yeah, people have been there. deceived yes. uh they've got on record that they've taken cars that have been actually in flood uh damaged areas mm -hmm. and just because it didn't damage the body 
or the make or the model, it still is good, but it's a lemon. And so I tell singles all the time, don't just look at the body. Don't just look at the outward appearance. Uh, check the hood, check under mm -hmm. the hood and mm -hmm. see what the engine is like and all the other things. Mm -hmm. Because it's so important that you don't just look at the surface of a person, but that you dig deeper. You know, what, what is their family background like? Yes. All those kinds yes. of things. So we've had a wonderful time today. Yes. I want to thank y'all again so much for coming on. It's been great. It's been fantastic. Listen, we thank you for tuning in on today to praise the Lord. We hope that you've been blessed. God bless you. Amen. Wow. I trust that you were truly blessed by that word. I want to invite you to come out and join us here at New Direction Church. Our service times on Sunday are at 8.30 a.m., 10.30 a.m., and 12.30 p.m. Our children's church and nursery are available during all of our Sunday morning services. We also have a powerful midweek service at 7 o'clock p.m. I look forward to meeting you and seeing your face in the place. Thank you again for tuning in to the New Direction Church broadcast where we're leading people to a better life.